Hey there, here are the best travel tips to beat jet lag on a long haul flight. I will teach you how to beat jet lag, how to help your circulation mid flight, and show you some other long flight tricks to use if you're flying to another country. Before your long haul flight, do these three tips to help prevent jet lag. Prevent means before problems arise. So here are the three things to do before your flight. Number one, hydrate like over hydrate two days prior to your flight. Number two, do not eat a heavy meal that day of your flight or the night before. In the boarding area or right before you leave home, put eye drops and like nasal saline spray in your nose. It helps keep everything lubricated. If you are flying a red eye flight, do not miss the tips in this video of how to beat jet lag when you are sleep deprived. Another thing we do, especially if we do fly an all night trip is to check with the hotel to see if they have early check-in. And then we do two things. We take a one hour nap by setting the timer. And number two, we immediately take a shower after that to help be refreshed. Now, if that is not available for you, check your airport where you will be landing to see if they have showers inside that airport. Another thing you can do is to refill your bottle of water before you leave the airport or buy a bottle of water before you leave the airport for that first few hours of touring. Those are just some easy tips to help you stay or feel more awake. There are three essentials that I pack that will help me be set up for success during the flight of preventing jet lag. And one of them is I pack snacks that are small and easy to digest. You can even buy a meal from the airport that is allowed inside the airplane. Fruit and like produce has some weird rules if you're flying to another country. So just be aware of that or research it. And then I pack some goldfish or Cheez-Its, graham crackers, grapes, or a sandwich that I've made from home. It can be pre-packaged or not packaged like that. But one mistake travelers make is they pack peanut butter for dipping a snack in, but peanut butter counts as a liquid. So the container needs to be 3.4 ounces or smaller and in your liquids bag just through airport security screening. If you put peanut butter between two pieces of bread, it does not count as a liquid. One travel hack is for the day after you do get sleep, after a long flight of not getting sleep, and that is to pack a snack because you will most likely be awake a long time before the shops open and you'll be hungry. Another essential for the airplane during a long flight is your must have medicine. Just in case these two things happen. One, your luggage is lost or two, there's no overhead bin space and your bag does have to be checked last minute and then it could get lost. You're going to pack your medicine, all of your medicine in your personal item bag. A neck pillow is another must have item if the flight takes longer than five hours only. This is more for long neck passengers because it is so secure. It's like wearing a neck brace. These straps are what make this my favorite neck pillow that I only recommend for travel because they attach to the headrest pieces that move forward that you're supposed to be able to sleep on. And then they hold your neck back like if all your weight is leaning forward, it's going to keep you upright. And then it has this easily adjustable uh, latch at the front. Many of my viewers, if you do not use this kind of a neck pillow, say that we are using neck pillows wrong. If you have a regular neck pillow, turn it around and that's the way you're supposed to use it. Let me know if that works for you. Another essential for the flight will help with your blood flow. And that is this little swing that you attach down below your tray table. It does not shake the seat in front of you. But here's a tip. Before your flight, do not attach it down there. It just drapes over your, your tray table. 
do not put it there because flight attendants are very strict with making sure those aisles are clear. So just wait until after takeoff to do it. It helps with circulation mid-flight because it has elevated your feet a couple of inches off of the ground of the airplane and it is easily adjustable. If you do not want to pack that or do not have the room to pack that essential, you can also do this travel hack for circulation and that is with each foot, you do the ABCs in lowercase every hour or every other hour and take it from me, there are muscles in your feet that you never knew you had. So if you do the capital letters with each foot, your muscles are going to be so sore the next day. So just do the lowercase alphabet. My mom's foot doctor told me that travel hack. You can also walk to the lavatory a couple of times if you're in the aisle seat. I also recommend only the Dr. Scholl's compression socks. Those are the only ones that I like. Do not buy the cheap ones at your neighborhood drugstore. They are not correct. If you have medical issues with circulation, please check with your doctor to see if you can wear compression socks. I also use compression leggings if I can find a dress that looks right with them because since we fly standby as employee families, we have a restricted dress code and I cannot wear leggings as pants. I am a pilot wife and that's why I share tips here on YouTube and Instagram to help you travel the globe without a worry in the world based on all of my mistakes that I've made. Another thing that we do during a long flight is to re-wet our eyes with preservative-free eye drops. Mine are individual vials and they're preservative-free. So they do expire after a couple of days once you open them, but they're so easy to pack. One tip is you may want to have a little bag that you can use near the end of your flight that has your eye drops or even a makeup pouch. Um, it has your eye drops and your moisturizer maybe, some toothpaste tablets that you're going to use before your flight ends. And that way you've taken those liquid items out of your liquids bag before you boarded the airplane and then you can just pack your liquids bag in your carry-on suitcase. I do have a video about eight packing hacks to help you pack. Like they're targeted specifically for packing. Then I will link that video for you in the first comment that you can watch at any time. One hour before your flight descends, I need you to do three important things. Number one, use the restroom because pilots are going to turn on that seatbelt sign in the descent and if you're flying to another country or after a long flight it will take about 45 minutes for it to descend maybe an hour then you have to wait for every single passenger to get off of the airplane about 15 minutes and you might have to stand in a 45 minute customs line so be prepared by doing that the number two thing to do before you land is to move your passport from a secure location to an easily accessible location if you will need it in the airport before leaving. The number three thing to do is to wash your face like they do in first class. Go into the lavatory and turn the hot water on and let it get really hot and just dampen a paper towel and just press it along your eye sockets and maybe your neck. It just will help wake you up again. And then you can also use these toothpaste tabs. They are real toothpaste, so you do need water to swish it around and spit it out. But do not use the airplane lavatory sink water. It's not potable. Use that bottle of water. And I will also use my eye drops again because that airplane air dries my eyes out like crazy. It is so painful. Now there is one mistake that can happen when you land because you're sleep deprived. And that mistake is you are distracted and then you get robbed or pickpocketed. You are looking at your phone or trying to find your documents in the airport after your flight instead of mid-flight. Somebody can walk by and grab your phone. So here are two tips to do to prevent that mistake from happening. Number one, secure your documents and have everything in place. And number two, move to the outer edge or to a wall or to a column that is on the outside edge of a crowd maybe in the airport. 
If you missed this tip earlier, remember that some international airports are really long and they could have multiple checkpoints for security. So have that passport easily accessible. When we flew from Washington Dulles to Barcelona, our room was not ready. So one thing we did before our trip was we made sure that that hotel before we booked it had early bag drop off. But here's a tip. If your hotel does not allow you to drop your bags, you can use nannybag.com. You can search for a Metro stop like or King's Cross in London, and it will tell you the nearest bag drop of that stop. And then you can continue on and take a tour that day or hop on a bus to do a tour later on. It's around six euros per bag. When you do land after being sleep deprived, you need to fight jet lag by staying active. And here are three tips to help you stay active. Number one, book a tour prior to your trip or a food tour. And that way you know the safe areas to come back to at night or later on. And you know the non-tourist areas that will give you authentic, delicious food for that culture. Number two, you're not going to eat anything heavy just that first day because your body is adjusting and trying to digest as easily as it can. And number three, you're going to stay hydrated by drinking lots of bottles of water. And this is one thing that I have used because it has nutrients for your body that are going to give you a boost naturally. You just put this packet in a bottle of water. It's potent. It's got real sodium, which is a needed nutrient. It's got magnesium and potassium to help give you a boost for that day of staying awake. But you can also drink Pellegrino or Perrier. Any mineral water gives your body minerals to help you stay refreshed. Samantha Brown also suggests not drinking coffee that day, that first day, so you can fall asleep. But I just cannot do that. <laughs> Another thing that you can do is a very important tip. My husband will print out the train station map or the Metro map, and he will log where we need to get off to meet this certain tour, especially on that first day, because when you are trying to lead everybody on a new train system, you're really having to concentrate, but remember you're sleep deprived as well. So that will help you be prepared before you even start so that you can also enjoy your vacation. And one travel tip that I just need to mention because it happens to me, a lot of the train systems over there have no airflow and it's not really cool. Um, so I get hot and when I'm tired and hot, I sometimes get nauseous. So one thing to help is if you are wearing a layer, make sure it's a thin layer that you can take off and tie in the train station when you get hot. And for that reason, I do not wear a vest when I'm traveling. If you are traveling to a pickpocketing area, I do have a video with ways to not get robbed and where to hide your money that I will list up here and in, in the first comment for you. One other travel tip that you can do is take a picture of your barcode that is inside the back cover of your passport. And if it gets lost, that will help expedite a replacement for you. If you are going on a river cruise, I have an updated packing list of what not to forget for those beautiful, wonderful river cruise vacations. All right, thanks for your time. I hope you get some sleep and fight that jet lag with my tips.